Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine, and in this video, we are going to be creating a Google Action. If you've heard of Amazon Echo and Alexa, this is Google's version. It's essentially Google's virtual. I don't know that one. Mm. It's essentially Google's virtual assistant that powers the Google Home and the Google Mini, as well as the Google Assistant app. As third-party developers, we can add functionality to these devices through Google Actions, which are similar to apps on the App Store or skills for Amazon Alexa. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is open up a browser and go to Actions on Google. Once we're there, we'll go ahead and click on the link. And this is going to be the home for where we create our Google Actions, our Google Apps, our apps for the Google Assistant. And so to get started, we will go ahead and click Actions Console. This will be our home for all of this development. This is where we're going to upload things. Um, of course, before we can develop anything, we have to create something or add a project. And in this case, we are going to be creating a flashcards action that basically quizzes you on chemical elements and the symbols that represent them. And so I'm going to go ahead and call this chemicals, and then we'll create the project. So I'll open this up so we can see all the different types of skills that we can create. And so here are different categories. Um, we can do games, home control, kids and family all of this great stuff and in this case we are actually going to be using one of their templates custom apps require a little bit more intensive development um, which i can definitely make videos on if you're interested but to just start off in this new world of google assistant and google actions we are going to use a template and this is really going to be a flashcards app like i was saying before and so we're going to go ahead and click the flashcards template now this is where we're going to set up our metadata as well as upload our content. So the metadata might be, you know, how do I call or invoke our Google Action? How do I begin to use the skill? How do I open it? You know, on an iPhone, all you have to do is click it, but you have to say something if you're using something for conversational. And so we'll be able to set that up. Um, but before we get to kind of all the bells and whistles of the action, let's start with the meat of the content. And so we are going to click on build your action. And this is where we are actually going to put in the content. So we'll go add an action. We don't have any actions. And so we're going to add one. We are going to be writing this in English. And it's going to be using this flashcards template. And so we'll go ahead and build it. And basically the root of it is a Google spreadsheet. So it's all in that Google ecosystem. Now we're gonna choose a personality for our Google Action, and this is just gonna be what's that voice behind our Google Action. And in this case, we are gonna choose Mr. Montgomery. We can click Next, and then the content. So what exactly are we gonna be quizzing people with these flashcards? You know, what is the content? You know, what is one side of the flashcard? What is the other side? Well, the way, again, the way we're gonna do this is through Google Sheets. And so here it's saying, you know, you need to create a Google Sheet, upload that sheet, and then it will validate it to make sure there aren't any weird symbols that'll mess up the system. To make this super easy, we can actually just copy one of their pre-filled spreadsheets. And so I'm gonna say, make a copy, and then we'll stuff in our own content. And so the actual template that they have here is based on baby animals. And so, you know, what is the baby animal name for an ant or a bee or a bird or, you know, whatever animal you can think of. And then they've populated the answers here. In the next column, you'll see that each question has a hint. And so, you know, this baby animal starts with this letter or this letter or this other letter or another type of hint. And so this will be like if you got the question wrong and you want a hint, then you can go ahead and ask for one and it will give you a hint automatically. And then this last column here is the follow-up. And so basically after, after you've answered the question either correctly or incorrectly, you'll get this follow-up. Like here's this extra you know, tip about this specific thing. Usually these are educational based flashcards education, um, but you don't have to have the follow-up. And so you'll see some of these are blank here. So we are going to delete all of this content. 
and add our own. So our flashcards game is going to be based on chemical elements. And so if you think of a few chemical elements, you have like iron and nickel and potassium, hydrogen, sulfur, carbon, all of those good things. Um, and our questions are going to be formatted in a pretty similar way. Basically, the question is going to be, what is the symbol for the chemical element? And then we'll put in whatever chemical element that we want. And so in this case, it'll be iron. And for iron, the symbol is Fe. And then we can add a hint and a follow up. So I'll go ahead and fill in these other questions and answers, and then we'll come back to the hints and follow ups. And to not make this super long, I'm just going to have five questions here, add in those answers, and then I'll go ahead and add the hints. And in this case, the hint is going to be the atomic number for that element. And then the follow-up is just going to be a little fun fact about the element. And these will be um, formatted differently for each, I guess, question um, or section, they're going to be formatted differently, meaning they're not going to have, you know, the same thing of the atomic number is blank or, you know, it won't have that same format that we saw in the question as well. These are going to be just very random fun facts I found on the Internet. All right, now our content is in place. So when I try to invoke my skill, I'm basically going to go like, you know, hey, Google, start my game. OK, it starts the game and then um, it will start going into this series of questions and the series of questions will be randomized and so we might not get, you know, iron first or potassium first or whatever, you know, it's going to be randomized and so it'll start the game, you know, and then it'll give me the question, you know, what is the symbol for the chemical element nickel, I'll be like, and I, or if it doesn't know, or if I don't know the answer, I'll be like, I don't know, or give something incorrectly. It might give me a hint or it might not, and then it'll go ahead and give me the answer if I don't reply correctly. And then after I get the answer, it'll give me the follow-up. So that'll be like a little short fun fact. In this case, we don't have any synonyms for our answers. So the symbol for iron is Fe. There's not another symbol for that, and so Fe is the only answer. But if, you know, for some reason the answer was book, you know, there are a lot of different ways you could say book, you could say novel, you could say storybook, or if the answer was puppy, you could say pup, you could say puppy, you know, depending on the type of question, you could say dog. So there are lots of different ways you are lots of different answers for a single question that are correct. So the way you can denote that is with these pipes that you see here. Um, but for us, we don't need that. And so I'll go ahead and delete these. Each template and really the whole like Google Assistant ecosystem in itself has a series of best practices and restrictions. But basically, they consist of making your questions not too long and making sure that they're age appropriate. And we can check out these guidelines by going to developers.google.com slash actions slash templates slash flashcards. In this case, this would be best practices for flashcards. Hashtag content best practices. And I'll put this link down below so you don't have to copy or try to type that in as I talk. But um, so, yeah, here we go. You know, want to keep the question short, answers short as well. Um, being sure, you know, making sure to add synonyms. And so in this case, they use the example of United States, USA, US um, and all of that good stuff. And then they have guidelines and restrictions. And so like the maximum question length is 200 characters. So you cannot have any more than that when using this template. But of course, if you were not using this template, like you were doing a little bit more of an intensive development process by using Dialogflow and then Google Functions and Firebase with Node.js. Those are a lot of big terms if you haven't heard them before, um, but I will definitely cover them in another video. Um, but if you went that route, then you wouldn't have these restrictions. Um, it'd mainly be guidelines, keep it short. You know, everyone wants short responses and short things to say. I guess, to your Google Home and Assistant. Uh, so you can read through these if you are um, 
curious and you know here they have things about special characters don't use these you can use these but for now let's continue to configure our google action we're almost finished basically now we're going to go over to the configuration tab and change you know our configurations or our metadata and so in this case the title to our flashcards action is going to be chemical element flashcards um, each game is going to have five questions in this case we only have five questions that we give it and so every time we play the game it's going to be the same five questions but if we wanted to change that we would basically you know add more here so that way it has more content which you can do in your own time but for the sake of this video to keep it short that's all we're doing and then for the question title we'll just say element and then for the answer title we'll just say symbol and now this is done all we have to do now is basically share this with our the actions on Google and so now I'm going to connect the sheet basically put in that URL and I put it in for you guys as well down below if you're curious of just what it looks like or want to copy it and kind of modify it do your own thing with it you are welcome to do that and then we are going to go ahead and create it and if there are no errors nothing looks strange it will validate it and say it's okay and then we'll be able to just run our google action and so much is done behind the scenes that we don't even know about we don't even need to know about it's great and so this will keep creating and there we go it says created and so we are ready to go ahead and test our app we are going to go ahead and jump into this this can look really scary um, but don't worry, I'm going to go ahead and do this so you can see. Um, but before we jump into our app, here are basically just a bunch of things we can use to debug and see what's going on inside of our app. We shouldn't need to use a too many of these today because, again, we're using their template, which makes it super easy to create these actions. But you could set your location here, you could set your language, you could set your surface. And so are you using the Google Assistant from a phone? from a smart speaker, um, so it's like the Google Home, Google Mini, or from a smart display, which are coming out later this year. And then down here, you'll see exactly how it's gonna look on these different devices. And then if you're gonna do a more intense development, then these request and response things are gonna make a little bit more sense to you. Um, but that is out of the scope of this video. Since we're using the template, we shouldn't have any errors with our Google action that are like, you know, did not respond or whatever. The only errors we might have is if we, we messed up something with the content itself. And so in this case, you know, it says the wrong word or something's misspelled or, you know, when I say the correct answer, it doesn't register as the correct answer to Google. Um, but these are all like QA type things. And so let's go ahead and start our app. I'll say talk to my test app and here we go it will load so you won't hear on um, this stuff because I have the mic all set up but we'll do a test run in a minute um, but here's basically like what it would say and so it says you know hey oh hey over there has a little intro you know kind of sassy um, and then we say yes we're ready to play so I could actually go yes We'll see if that works. All right, cool. So what is the symbol for the chemical element sulfur? S. So in this case, I said S. So here it says, you know, great job. You know, we got it. Gives me the follow-up, which in this case, you know, sulfur is abundant, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, I can also, I said these things before because I clicked the little mic here on the right. Um, but I could also type things in. And so if you, you know, have used the Google Assistant app, it's on iPhone and Android and all the devices, um, you can actually type things or say things. And so in this case, I'm going to actually give it an incorrect answer. I'm going to say O because um, it's really H. And here we go. Here I'm going to select hint. And so here it has suggested input. I'll select hint and then it'll give me the hint. The atomic number for this element is one and say so, okay I got it we'll say H 
And so here you can kind of see it's going to give you that question and then the answer. And then it'll basically do that five times going through all of the different questions. Um, in this case, because we set our question limit to five in our configurations in the Google spreadsheet. Uh, so if we go back here, you know, we set questions for game five. And so this would continue on. I'm going to just go ahead and do it super quick. And so here again, we get our follow up, we get a little congratulations and then push onwards to another set. That's basically start another game. Um, and so we can say yes or no to that. I'm going to say no so we can end this and see kind of the full completion. As we were going through this, though, I did notice like some QA things. And so here, you know, here it says iron, blah, 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 blah. And then we have the period and then space period. And so we could probably go back into our um, flashcards game and figure out what is the issue with that um, or our spreadsheet and figure that out. But in this case, we'll keep going. We'll say no. And there we go. It says, you know, great job and leaves the conversation. And so this is a third party action. This means you have to enable the app or basically say this talk to my blah, blah, blah in order to get access to the functionality of the application and use the app. Now let's test it on the device. Hey, Google, talk to chemical element flashcards. Sure. Here's the test version of Chemical Element Flashcards. Welcome back to Chemical Element Flashcards. Great to see you back here. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's start off with this one. What is the symbol for the Chemical Element Iron? F-E. Look at you go. Iron is the second most common metal on Earth. Here's another. What is the symbol for the Chemical Element? So in this case, I just texted it or I messaged back S and so it didn't send me any like voice response because I messaged it instead of saying it out loud. Um, and we can do it again for the next one. And so for this one, nickel, so N I, and we'll go ahead, hit enter. Woohoo, we got it correct. And then we'll keep going. This time I'll respond um, with voice. Okay. <laughs> Nice job. Bananas have lots of potassium. And lastly, what is the symbol for the chemical element hydrogen? Oh, just to see what happens. Nope on a rope with some soap. Do you want a hint or try again? Give me a hint. Okie dokie artichoke. The atomic number for this element is one. What do you think it is? H. Nice. With a standard atomic weight of 1.008, hydrogen is the lightest element on the periodic table. Wanna hear some good news? You aced every one of the five questions. I have one last question for you. Do you know what time it is? Well, it's time to party. Do you want to push onwards to another set? No. Okie dokie pokey. Take care. And there we have it. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new and be sure to subscribe if you want more tutorials. If you're interested in something more in depth and technical, check out my LinkedIn learning courses down below. Thanks for watching and happy coding.